but yeah, no, it's a, it's a, it's a brilliant film. And so, Julia, like, how did you come on board? Like, share your story. Um, you know, oh, uh, I read the script back in 2010. This is like probably one of the first renditions of it. I auditioned. I think I got a call back. I remember actually saying to Louise, I've got this friend. His name's Brett. He's awesome. You have to see him for the role of Matt. And they inevitably ended up casting him. And I was like, oh my God, that's amazing, Brett. Congratulations. And then I didn't hear anything. Silence. Absolute, like nothing. And I went, ah, oh, it's unfortunate. Didn't go my way. Oh, well. And then years later, like literally two or three years later, I get this call going, they'd, they'd like to see you again for All About E. I'm like, what do you mean? They haven't, they haven't filmed that yet? Um, and it's just that, you know, again, getting money. And I don't even know how you did that, Jay. Um, but it took that much longer for them to get everything together. And, um, and so then I remember I had a call back with you, Dals. We came into the room and I remember going, uh-oh, I'm really tall compared to the lead that they have cast. I feel... I'll just slouch a lot in my audition. They won't, it won't be a thing. It'll be fine. And there's Jay saying, can you just, can you just stand up straight? I'm like, yeah, I'm, 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 this is, I'm really, this is straight. So I'm really standing up straight in order to get cast. But yeah, so look, it was, it, how did I come about it? The same way that most actors come about their projects. I picked up an audition script and I went, love it. Would love to do it. Um, and was lucky. And really, I think I have to credit so much to Louise and Jay that this is kind of like, you, you know, the break um, for me. This was my first feature film. Um, it put me on a big screen. Lots of people came to see it. Um, from there, like more feature films have followed on. Um, big things on TV have kind of followed on from that. So, you know, this is like, it's where it all started, do you know what I mean? This is like, it's, and it's a beautiful script and I feel like it was a role that I like felt really comfortable in my skin to play. So, yeah. And Thanks similar, Louise, thanks Jay. <laughs> Mandala, it was similar for you, wasn't it? Because obviously you've done all about E and then you've basically just like moved to LA and now you're in like every lesbian thing we've ever heard of. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I actually first came across All About E. Is that what you're, would you like to know how I first? Okay, cool. Um, through a Facebook um, post, someone actually sent me the, the audition via Facebook and said, oh my God, this sounds just like you. Um, you should audition for this. And I believe I sent Louise mm. my self tape and uh, an email saying how much I would love to audition for this piece this this character because it would be wonderful and then I you ended up I was going to send a self-tape but then you ended up saying if you'd love to come to Sydney it would be much better so I flew to Sydney with my flute um to have an audition to meet Jay and Louise I walked in I was terrified had the audition walked out and they said we'd hear you you know we'll let you know within two weeks because we have so many people to audition and I think it was like two days later, they called me up and said, we'd love to offer you the role of E. And I remember I still have the visuals walking around my apartment and being like, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to act cool and calm and collected on the phone, but I'm like kicking out my feet and like pounding <laughs> air and like so excited that I got this role. It was a dream come true. And then from this, you know, we, we, we screened, we premiered an Outfest and Frameline and then I met Christy Conicella who wrote me into Forever Not Maybe, I got a visa and now I'm in LA and in all this queer content and I could not be happier. Wow. So, I mean, I mean, that's quite impressive. Like, so Jay and Louise, like to know that you've kind of, your first feature launched two kind of really kind of successful careers. Like that must make you really proud as well. Are you, like, are you, are you making other films? You've got a film festival as well now, haven't you? In yeah, Italy. so now, um, yeah, look, uh, so we moved back to England. Um, that was a big thing. And there was a film, another, uh, a much bigger film that I had planned. And it's, mm. it's one of those stories where it's, it's a, a story that, I hope it will be made well um, and we got close, but someone else is actually, it's based on a real historical character and someone else has actually now got that film and made it. Um, but it, because of COVID and because everything's changed, it will come out with rather famous people 
uh, next year, I think, by now. So that was hard, um, losing that. Uh, but uh, we run a film festival called the Hebden Bridge Film Festival, which we absolutely love doing. And it's um, a great way, again, to sort of bring content uh, to people and to experience it. We always have, you know, lots of Q&As and, and everyone comes. And Hebden Bridge is a great town, so if anyone's in England, it's in March, <laughs> the last weekend of March um, 2021. We will do a sort of version in September if the lockdown finishes, but we don't know. Mm. So we had to postpone. We had to postpone this year's festival but it was our first year last year and it you know we didn't know what it would be like and whether it'd be okay and it was really really successful and and completely sold out and all that sort of thing so that was very exciting that that worked and and we're part of a community here which is you know there's a very big uh queer community here which is very supportive but also generally just a, 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 an open community which is wonderful so um, it's fantastic and I'd really like to film, I, I'm very drawn to landscape and today we were cycling across the moors and I'm very drawn to the landscape. So I am thinking again, what would I make that again has something to do with landscape? So watch this space. But it won't, as we know, it won't happen straight away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, and so... Um, and it's quite nice as well like I think what I like about it is also it's not a kind of we have a lot of rom-coms and I always get excited when there's something that's a bit different a bit more meaty and a bit more interesting and that was quite nice to see as well um and it like so what I'm interested to know is what 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 films inspired you and what are kind of your favorite films that kind of interested you in terms of making this film uh, look, I'm, I, I like a real mixture of films. Um, I, I have to confess that there's a real old film that people may or may not know, but I think Desert Hearts was a, a, fan, a fantastic film. And given that it was a, you know, it was a, a period production, it was set back in time, so it was expensive to make. Um, I have so much admiration for, for Donna Deitch. I mean, it, it's just like that film they ran out of money in the middle of filming and they had to stop and come back. I think it may have been a year, a whole year later. Mm. And it's extraordinary when I look at that film and see what they achieved. And given that they had a lot, it was a much more difficult time to make it and the actresses were under huge pressure not to do the parts. And mm. so that, that would be in terms of queer films. Um, I'm a huge Jane Campion fan. So I really like mixing up both serious and comedic elements. So, um, you know, and I think she does that in some of her other films, not, you know, all of them, but um, I really like that. I, I, I like such a wide variety of films. Um, I'm just trying to think of who else I'd put up there um, in terms of, you know, I'm, I'm really impressed at the moment with television. I feel like television has really taken the baton especially in terms of um, reasonable production values. I felt I, I, I was on the board of Mardi Gras Film Festival in Sydney for a long time and I got very frustrated with what I, you know, no offence to anyone, but some really, really bad lesbian content. And that was, there were two things I wanted to do. One was I wanted to make a film that was about more than just being a lesbian, that it had lots of other elements to it. And that lots of people don't know about Australia and that Australia's got, you know, a huge multicultural population and that there's a lot of things going on there. And, you know, um, I wanted to explore that. But I also wanted to, I felt like I hadn't seen that many films where I felt like the relationship between women had been shown in the way that I felt was, you know, especially that very special when someone had, fallen um, in love with, with someone in a very deep kind of way. So I felt like that was, I, I wanted to try and do that. And the other thing was, I literally wanted to try and do a film which had all those things. I wanted to do crowd scenes. I wanted to do action sequences. I wanted to do a love scene. I wanted to do lots of things. So so that that's part of it. It was, it was really, as a director, they're technically quite hard to do and to pull off, and I have to just say, our editor, Rowena, mm. was fantastic because, you know, 
when you don't have enough money, our first AD was very experienced and he, he looked at us with this kind of kind, pity <laughs> look in his eyes and said, look, girls, I've done the figures and basically you've got five weeks, enough money to shoot for five weeks just or just under five weeks. I'm begging you, go back and try and raise some more money and shoot for seven weeks and then you'll 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 not you'll have an okay time and we just knew didn't we we we, we just couldn't raise any more money we had killed ourselves and we had raised the most money at that stage probably not now but at that time we were the biggest fundraising crowd fundraising, crowd fundraising campaign in australia for a beach <laughs> that had ever been done so um so look we, we were really proud of that but at the same time we also knew look we just we haven't got any more energy or resources. Oh, yeah, and there were lots. I mean, we needed an extra two weeks, really. Which is a lot of money. Like, every every day is a huge amount of money. And that's with, and that's on, that's even with lots of people doing things as favours we had. Mm. I mean, we're not, when I look at it, there was hundreds of people involved with the mm. Like, hundreds. Mm. So it takes mm -hmm. a village. To, it really does take a village to make a film. Yeah. Paige, our beautiful makeup artist, has just said four babies came from that film. It was one of those. I know. Films where it was three there were a lot of romances hooked up on that film and are still together to this day. It's amazing. Oh, like this wow. film changed so many people's lives in ways that we could not even imagine. Yeah. Well, so on that note, Claire has asked Julia and Mandala what you've been in since. Now, obviously, um, let's start with Julia because obviously, as you say, you, this launched for you and you've been on TV um, and you've also recently just been in um, First Day on TV, which is Julia Kalsef's new, um, it's the first... Think, sort of. So, you in um, so First Day I wasn't acting in, I was the drama okay. coach on. So First Day is um, an amazing show. Uh, that I think you can watch internationally on ABC iView. It's a four-part, half-hour mini-series yeah. about Hannah. We can't um, watch it, Julia. It's it. oh. <laughs> um, it will come. Will yeah. It will come. Oh, it's yeah. a transgender story yeah. about Hannah who starts grade seven as the girl that she knows she is. And we had Evie McDonald, who is the most extraordinary actress. Oh, my goodness. Watch this space. That girl is going to explode. Um, she already is. And she's a trans actress. Um, and there were two other trans uh, teenagers in that shoot as well who were just so brave and so incredible. It was such a privilege to work on. Um, but, yes, I wasn't, I, I wasn't an actor in that one. I was drama coach on that. Um, I'm just going to throw some titles at you, Claire. If you jump onto YouTube, you can type in <laughs> Starting From Now. It's a web series, five seasons, six Which episodes in each lesbian. season. They're seven minutes yeah. long. It's lesbian. Um, it's very binge-worthy. Uh, <laughs> be patient. I'm only in seasons four and five, but it's all good, so you'll enjoy the whole thing. Um, and then what else? Uh, what else can you watch? Um, Ellie and Abby and Ellie's dead aunt was coming to London. It was part of BFI yep. flair, but then Corona happened. And so that got canceled, but that will happen. Mm -hmm. So Ellie and Abby brackets and Ellie's dead aunt. Um, what else can I throw at you? It's coming soon. Again, it was meant to be released by the end of this year. Um, another feature called Buckley's chance, um, a Canadian Australian co-pro okay. that again, showcases amazing Australian landscape. So that's another one for you, Alex to make you nostalgic <laughs> and miss home. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's nice. Um, yeah, and, and I think, yeah, it's, it's interesting because I think um, I saw the short of, of First Day because that went to BFI Flair. Um, and that, that, I think that's something we will eventually get. I've given Judy tons of UK TV contacts. Just said, like, any of these, please. Um, I tried to get my sister to stream it on Zoom as a shared, but she's not technical. I gave up. So I haven't seen it, but um, we've all done it in the UK at some point, but it's just not yet. Um, starting from now, is actually coming from, come into Lesflix as well by the end of the month. So we'll be getting that on our channel, um, which we're very excited about. And um, so on to Mandala, who, I mean, have we got three hours <laughs> uh, to go through? So Mandala, um, yeah, do you want to go through some of the stuff you're in at the moment? Okay, so what is um, what you can see at the moment? I have probably my only straight <laughs> role. 
Um, it's called for, uh, for the Love of Jesse, which you can find on Amazon Prime. Um, I think it's Roku, uh, Google Play, iTunes, those things. Um, I play Sage Smith from Adelaide. I got to work with the incredible Adrian Barbeau. If some of you have heard of her, she was like uh, one of the original screen queens and like the fog and those things. Um, I have Butch Power for the Straight Gal, which is a lesbian's takeover, pretty much making over straight women. Um, there's five of us. It's incredible. I mean, it's incredibly fun. I play Sam, interior designer, um, and we have our premiere for the um, Clexicon Virtual Film Festival next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, another short film called Synchronicity, which has an incredible musician called Rumi, who is, um, she plays the my love interest in it. Um, oh, my goodness. Passage, I believe, is... Coming to, uh, we had a screening, a watch party last a couple of weeks ago now. Um, Sci-fi lesbian um, stars Nicole Payson, Shannon Lee Reeve, um, Hillary. Um, uh, Hillary is actually Hillary and I are going to be working together. We're going to be bringing you a new short called "Slay My Heart," where I play a serial killer during the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> Oh, bloody typecast again. <laughs> um, I'm very excited about that one. I am also just currently, um, some of you may have heard of the wonderful director, Marina Rice-Bader. Um, Marina is, and I, and Yaz, who is OML, um, one more lesbian, uh, fellow Australian, and Emily Goss. I don't even know if I should be talking about this right now, but I figure you're all here, might as well. Um, we're actually doing a during quarantine COVID-19 um, wonderful um, love story for you all, which will be coming out very soon. We have started shooting this week and it is going to be incredible in the way that the actors are actually doing all the lighting, all the setup, all the camera work, all the... It's it's gonna be. I'll let you know by Friday because my shoe day is Friday. But um, I'm excited by that. Um, oh my goodness, what else is coming out? What about hey Mandela? Can people yes. see August in the City? I was about to say you forgot. Yeah, actually, Les Flicks at the moment. You can yeah. actually see August in the City as Les Flicks. Um, uh, Christy Conicella has also brought out a feature film called Forever Not Maybe, which I believe will be coming to doing something with Les yes. We were supposed to be doing a summer tour in cinemas, which would have been epic, and they shut all the cinemas, which is not epic at all. Um, but it, so it hasn't done its festival run yet. So as soon as we have open cinemas, and as soon as the film is available, we will be starting it off again. In talking about films that you know, take forever, we started shooting at that in December 2015. Um, and we ended up shooting it in June 2016, June 2017, then again in August 2018, um, and turned it into a feature <laughs> film. And I haven't seen a damn thing. Um, I've so, seen it. Brilliant. You have seen it? Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, that's exciting. So I look forward to that coming out to the world. Um, I'm sure there are more that I'm missing. Oh, I have a crazy bitches. Venice, I got to work with um, Crystal Chappelle <laughs> yep. and got to be that. So there's plenty of things out there. You don't need to see my face anymore. There's more things coming. It's fine. <laughs> What's most exciting is that it's all queer content, which means that there's way more representation out there, which makes my little heartbeat way happier. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah you were crazy bitches as well. Which you oh, and Biffle as well. Biffle is actually going to be having um, a premiere either, I think, very, very soon. Reverie is a new platform which is coming out to all LGBTQ um, platforms and that is going to, which is what the Yaz thing and Marina is also going to be screening on, so Reverie. Um, and Biffle is an LGBTQ comedy with a lot of drama. It's like the new Queer Friends. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit then. I mean, I wasn't joking you know, when I said I've been a little busy. <laughs> um, which is why I'm like, it's so rare to kind of like, because I think if we weren't in lockdown, basically you, no one would ever be able to get hold of Mandala because you're just busy a lot. Um, yeah, which is, and I think, you know, and I think that's the thing is like, you want to be busy, which is good. And it's, I think it's really good to see the pipeline of content is 
feeding through because there's definitely an appetite for more and more and more content. So um, Jenny has asked um, Mandala, what is it like wearing a bullfighting outfit? Good question. I actually have it in my closet just over there, and I thought about putting it on today. But I can get it for you so you can all see it because it you can't be. say that you have it and then not pull it out. Go come get on, it. Come, come on. on, come on. <laughs> oh. I it. I, I have to say, going to the going to the fitting with Mandala, we had the most wonderful seamstress. And she literally sewed Mandala into that costume because it needed to be very close fitting. And it was, you know, amazing again what she pulled off. We didn't have a lot of time or a lot of money. But I have to say, it was you had a good time in it, didn't you, Mandala? It is one of my prized possessions. You have no idea. It is, <laughs> it is absolutely stunning. I took it to Clexicon and I actually wore it for Clexicon so that people could see it. And I sat on the Lexa throne in it and I have pictures in that and it's just perfect. But look at this incredibleness. Yeah. It's like these little tiny things, the gold bits you see are tiny little springs, like tightly wound springs all sewn together in this. And it is the most divine thing. And I very much still fit into it. So one day when we have another screening, I will. I was going to put it on today, but. Hey, it's all right. Okay, I'll just put the top on. <laughs> <laughs> Can I help so really, really had to twist with that arm there. A little bolero goes a long way. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. It is stunning. Beautiful. Instant yeah. power. Yeah, yeah okay. definitely. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we spent hours there <laughs> getting that sewn in. It is hand embroidered. She hand stitched every single thing that you see on it. She actually also mined the sweat stains because I was jumping up and down and dancing for hours in this. Um, she actually cut everything out so that you can actually see. So she got a shirt that is the, the embroiderer got a shirt and cut it so and cut it into the actual jacket so that when I button it up, it's a little zip into the shirt and then buttoned it up. It's just an incredible amount of detail. Yeah. It was good stuff. Mm. <laughs> um, and Julia, so you've obviously done a mixture of kind of uh, straight content and obviously like like Ellie and Abby is another kind of lesbian thing. Do you have a like? Do you prefer like? What's your what? What have you enjoyed working on? And are you finding it's nice that you've got the choice? Um, it's a very fabulous question. Very interesting question. Um, what do I prefer? I prefer. I cannot wait for the day when it's just the one bucket of film, right? Where you go, I'm an actor and I play interesting humans. And it, it's almost like, I, I, don't get me wrong, I love and support the fact that we have queer film festivals and that, you know, every country in the world has its own kind of version of that. But I cannot wait for the day when queer content is so common and we've nurtured our queer artists being actors and directors and writers and designers and all of the things um, to such a point where there just happens to be queer content in everyday cinema and that there's no longer a division. I think it's useful and having the division has been an amazing assistance in getting uh, opportunities to artists to grow their talent. Um, you don't become an amazing talent at whatever it is that you work at overnight. You need to have space to fail and make mistakes and kind of do something and go, oh, that didn't go right, and then re-improve it. And so the space of having LGBTQ content, it kind of is a, a smaller bubble to protect that. But wouldn't that be amazing if All About E was just in festivals and, you know, it was just, yeah. it was so widely accepted in the same way that physical disability could do the same thing or, you know, people of colour, you know, the, it, let's, let's just keep diversifying until we don't need to diversify. Yeah, I agree. And I find it quite frustrating, actually, because um, 
I'm having to hire cinema screens to put lesbian films on in cinemas because they're not being programmed. And that for me is just like disappointing. And I was on a conversation today with distributors about how they're reopening cinemas and how to bring audiences back. And all they were talking about was age groups. And I was like, yeah. and so all their plans are just to rehash repeats of mainstream TV that's still on TV. And I was like, you're not thinking outside the box at all. You've got an opportunity here to diversify cinema, to bring different audiences. And I was like, there's so much content, it's independent film that never gets cinema screens anymore. Um, but the cinemas are so focused on like the Hollywood and the mainstream releases that I fear that we're just not, we're going backwards from that. But that's what I'd love to see is actually that every cinema, every film gets every opportunity for every audience because the storylines like, all about E has a great storyline that would probably interest so many more people than get to see it because it doesn't get the same release and the same exposure, which is really disappointing. Um, mm -hmm. TV is kind of changing in a different way. And like, I think there's been some good changes, but yeah, I feel like we're so far away from that. And yet we're in 2020, um, which is frustrating, but you know, it's, you have to just keep fighting the fight, I think really. And for me, I'm like, looking for opportunities to get the screen space to kind of show people that these films are worth investing in um, and giving a bigger audience And kind of proving distributors wrong. This is the same conversation we had with all of the distributors before Ellie and Abby were made that said, yeah, yeah, it's great, but it's lesbian content. We won't go there. And we were like, this is more than lesbian content. There's an audience for this beyond just being queer. This is anyone who's felt ostracised at school. I think that's 90% of humans, right? So yes. we had this massive discussion. Finally, the film goes out. And of course, distributors like are leaping at it because it, it, you can see in the cinema, there's this massive cross section of men in a lesbian film, of people of color in a lesbian. Do you know what I mean? Like this massive cross section of different humans going, I relate to that story. And I think this is where each and every one of you fabulous humans watching on Zoom right now come in, in handy because if you tell one person about an independent film or an independent you know, web series that you've seen or a short film that you've seen and then that person watches it and then that person tells a friend, you have no idea about the impact that you can create that will create more content that you're interested in and help fund these projects that you hear artists constantly say we didn't have enough time we didn't have enough money and la 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 it's it's we're all in this together hashtag covid but also the arts <laughs> yeah 